we have now entered, entered into a discussion that is an attorney-client uh, discussion. This is um, privileged communication. You are my clients, I hope. Um, you're at least all employees of Freedom, and I am the lawyer for Freedom. This is confidential. Um, you are not to discuss this with anyone outside the company. Cone of silence is now descended. Media galleries. So there, there are these things all over the web. You get them off of Google Images. You get them off of TwitPics. You get them off of Flickr. You can all kinds of places. The good sources will have copyright information that you can look at. But it's not always the case. And as you probably discovered, there wasn't copyright information there wasn't an attribution. There was, there was no way to know that this is a photo that somebody claims ownership in. Um, and what I will tell, sort of my rule of thumb is when you don't know, assume it's bad as opposed to assume it's free. If you can't find some indication that the photographer consents to the kind of use that you want to make, then assume that you don't have permission. So the kinds of indications that will tell you that the photographer or the content creator does consent are things called open source license, creative commons license, things that sound like uh, non-commercial use with attribution. Or um, So then the question is, suppose you see a little button uh, icon uh, next to the photo that has the creative commons icon. And the icon uh, indicates that the author of the content is willing to make this available for non-commercial attri with attribution. Is the Orange County Register or OC, uh, uh, which part of the website was this? This was OC Register. Um, is OC Register a non-commercial uh, publication? No. Right, it's not. We make money off it, hopefully. Um, <laughs> if this photo had been used in an advertisement on OC Register, it would be commercial. Because it was on the news or the con or sort of non, -co it was the content side as opposed to the advertising side. It would be non-commercial so long as we didn't do anything commercial with it. Like, we didn't have any ads running against this photo. We have ads running against our page, but do we have an ad linked, uh, triggered by this photo? I don't think that was the case with this. Um, so long as we are not engaging in commercial exploitation, we are merely conveying the content for its non-commercial value, we're OK under a Creative Commons non-commercial license. Um, but I will tell you that if you ever get a, a demand letter to uh, from somebody who has put a non-commercial use and he thinks the OC register is not uh, non-commercial, let's just take it down before we get that far along. Let's not argue about this one. Um, but the teaching moment is be very careful about content that you grab off of the internet because unless you can identify that the use is permitted, because you have to assume that it is not permitted in 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 the absence of any indications. Yes? If a realtor sends us like a link to like a, like a, a list of their, their properties. Yes. And we use that link. Yes. To grab the photos. Yes. Are we assuming that we have permission? So this is, the question is about using photos uh, particularly with uh, real estate, from realtors, uh, real estate brokers. And this is a, uh, just a, uh, a cesspool. Um, the, <laughs> the problem is that real estate brokers do exactly the kind of uh, fast and loose relationships with photographers that I worry about with stringers in the newsroom. I mean, some of these photographers, they, they don't even get out of the car. They just drive and click um, <laughs> as they go. Um, and they get paid, but uh, I don't know if there's a written agreement. But the fact that you get 
a link from the real estate broker that says here are the photos that fact suggests that the real estate broker is giving you consent to, to use the photos in the paper but it isn't necessarily the case that the photographer gave the real estate broker that consent and what matters is the owner of the copyright who is the owner of the copyright in that scenario? It might be the real estate broker if there was an agreement that was a work made for hire agreement. You'll never know. Um, and you should not assume. Uh, you should ask the real estate uh, broker, can you uh, get us something from the photographer that says it's OK for us to use the photos? That's the safest. That's a huge transactional cost. It's a pain, um, but I'm telling you that there are lawsuits by these photographers who do real estate photos because they think they should get a cut. Yes? Getting back real quickly to this media gallery uh, question, uh, I, I work in entertainment, and we publish a lot of photos of entertainers of various kinds, and often we'll get photos of, their enter of those entertainers from the entertainer's own website yes. where they will have a media gallery. Yes. Is, is, is it permission implied there when it's from the entertainer's own website? So the, the question is, uh, for those of you who didn't hear it, um, and we're recording this so I'm repeating it for the videotape. Um, Suppose you have a, a photo of a celebrity, somebody who has their own uh, site, website, and the photo that you grab is from that website. Isn't it fair to assume that the celebrity who's posted the photo on the celebrity's website is consenting to your grabbing the photo? But specifically, if it's in the media or press gallery, that, um, not just any okay. Photo. If there is a media gallery or there's a press gallery, there's a place on the website that implicitly conveys the idea, here are photos you can use of me. The answer is not so much. Maybe. We hope so. Uh, but I want you to actually go to the terms of use, the, the legalese on the website, and I want you to see whether the website uh, has terms of use that authorizes you to take the photos in the media gallery and use them. If it is a sophisticated celebrity, they will have some language in their legal jargon that tells you whether or not it's okay. And the reason why I'm hesitating is just because the celebrity has put the photo in the media gallery of the celebrity's uh, website doesn't necessarily mean, one, that the celebrity owns the copyright, and two, that the celebrity, if the celebrity doesn't own the copyright, has gotten permission to, from the photographer who shot the photo. And oftentimes, these uh, celebrities do the same thing we do. They get somebody else's photo of them, and they put it on their website. And usually, uh, it's not so much a problem because they take the photos from fans or from the, the person who took the photo is usually happy to have to be exploited. <coughs> yes. Related to that, a lot of celebrities claim they own the right to their likeness. They do. Where does that put them in trouble with the documents who try to exploit them? Right, so the question is about this claim by celebrities that the celebrity no owns not just the photo, but the image in the photo, their face. That they have a right to control the use of their name, likeness, sound, or image. And the answer is they do, but only for commercial purposes. The right of publicity is what you're referring to, and the right of publicity ends with non-commercial news use of the image. So long as you are not trying to sell widgets or anything, newspapers, on the strength of the celebrity's image, and just because the celebrity is on the cover of the paper does not mean that you are engaging in an effort to sell the newspaper based on that celebrity's face, even though People Magazine does that all the time. Uh, <laughs> or Inquirer, or yeah, everybody. Um, but the short answer is the right of publicity is separate from copyright. Right of publicity does involve the face in the photo, not so much, in fact, not at all, the photographer who took the photo. 
But the photographer who took the photo may have what's called a model release. Model not in form, but model as in celebrity. Um, the model who's in the photo usually signs a release, and that, if that release form was good, conveyed to the photographer the right of publicity, the, any of the celebrities uh, or the models rights of publicity were conveyed to the photographer and the photographer then can give you those rights. Yes? What about Facebook? What about Facebook? Can you take the photos from Facebook? Well, I, uh, there was a photo I wanted to use and I saw the New York Daily News had it. I looked to see if it was Getty or AP. Uh, Getty had it and it just said credit Facebook. So I this wouldn't be the young woman who had a little dalliance with Governor Spitzer, would it? No. Because <laughs> no. her photo moved after New York Post got her photo off of Facebook. Um, anyway, the... Well, when I looked at the photo, and, and I knew the person in the photo would, would have no problem with my using the photo, but I worry, what if the rights to the photo are really owned by the photographer? That's a good worry. Not give permission to the... Yes. Family, even though the, the woman gave permission. Yes. In fact, it's highly likely that the person in the photo is not the person who took the photo. <laughs> And the person who is in the photo is usually not the owner of the copyright because they were in the photo. Um, so when people give us permission to use their to take a photo of them off of Facebook, that's they're really not in a in a position to give us permission. They might be. They might have ownership rights. It might be that it's mom and dad. This is not a snapshot. This was a very professional photo. Okay. Even yeah, yeah, even better. Um, Katy Perry's high school yearbook. Mm -hmm. The commercial photographer who took the, com uh, the high school yearbook photos, the formal uh, photos, photos uh, and the photo appears in the yearbook, and then when Katy Perry gets famous, everybody goes to the yearbook and starts grabbing that photo, uh, the, and the photographer s says, okay, give me my money because I own the copyright in that photo, even though it's uh, in the yearbook and even though you got it off the high school's website, there was no permission. Facebook is the same kind of scenario. The photo exists there. Somebody may even give you permission to go onto their Facebook page. This is a different seminar. It talks about whether or not you had permission to go into the Facebook page. But um, you can't assume that you have the copyright rights to use the photo. When we get past ownership, we're, I'm going to get to the other side of the question, which is use, fair use. Right now, we've been, to, or I've been trying to talk about ownership. Do you own it? We're then going to get into the question of even if you don't own it, can you get away with using it without permission? Um, and the answer is, it depends. But we have better arguments when we use somebody else's photo for illustration of a news story that's breaking, that's uh, hot news. Um, when we're doing something that's more long term, there's a question about whether or not we could uh, pay a license for it. We can go to Getty and we, we do. We pay uh, stock photo agencies money. And if we engage in a practice of paying money for photos, we should probably pay money for a non-breaking hot news photo. But We'll get to fair use, and you'll see that uh, you can't pin lawyers down. Um, we, we, we will wiggle and wriggle and try to escape your effort to get us to give you a straight answer. Uh, <laughs> well, sort of related to the, the celebrity website, if a company has a website, yes. And you're writing, you know, they're writing about their The Chrysler, the, yeah, like Chrysler. I'm, suppose you're the automotive writer and you go, and Chrysler has all these really sexy photos of their cars. Um, yes, you can, it is safe to assume in that context that the business that is hosting those photos, where the photo is in of some kind of media gallery, where it's intended, it's likely that you've got permission. Um, I mean, lawyers always want belt and suspenders, but it, you're probably safe. Yes? Okay. Um, so you get the photo from the DA of the mugshot. Okay. Okay. Let's start with your question and then we'll go to my uh, horror story. Um, <laughs> photo on a government website. 
Can you assume that the government owns the copyright in the photo? No, you cannot assume anything. Even if the photo has a credit line, and the photo credit line says uh, Department of uh, Parks and Recreation, um, because they're they probably don't know copyright law either. Um, and they're probably saying Department of Parks and Recreation because uh, their friend Joe took this photo for them and they are using it on their page for the Parks and Recreation Department. So of course, it's their photo. Not so much. Um, the bottom line is it is not safe to assume that a photo on a government website is free and available for the taking unless it's a federal agency, and the photo has all of the indications that suggest to you that it was taken by a federal employee. And the reason why is the federal government cannot own copyright. The Copyright Act explicitly forbids the federal government, remember I talked about copyright arises when you fix it in a tangible medium, except for the federal government. <coughs> the federal government can own copyright in works created by someone who is not a federal employee that is transferred to the federal government. That they can do, and that's how uh, the US Army Be Strong campaign can be owned by the Army, even though the Army, and it's because the Army didn't create it, the Army hired an ad agency, and the ad agency created the ad campaign and then transferred the copyright to the Army, and then the Army can sell all kinds of trinkets around Be, be Strong. Um, so federal government, usually, if, you can, if it looks like the photo is taken by the um, federal government, you're OK. Otherwise, state government, local government, you can't assume. And then what about content that's on a federal or any government website that is clearly content provided by somebody else? It's the maps of the development plan that the developer has created and the developer has given to the city council for the city council to review and the city council posts those plans on its website. Can you grab those? Well, yeah, you can. Uh, will you be infringing copyright if you grab it without permission? Um, yes, you will. If you don't have uh, permission, you will be infringing. But then we're going to get to fair use, and we're going to talk about, in the context of a news story about the development plans, you're probably, likely, OK. But if you take the development plans, you take the image that you got from the government website, and you turn it around and you start exploiting its commercial value, you, I don't know, you do something with it, um, then you are not engaging in fair use. Um, before I get to fair use, I want to um, focus on a, a, a recurring theme, which is mugshots. You get the mugshot from the law enforcement agency. You can assume that a mugshot is taken by the law enforcement agency. Unlikely that they're hiring a commercial photographer to take mugshots. <laughs> <laughs> and, there, and therefore, when that government agency gives you the mugshot, or you get the mugshot from someplace that they make it available, you can assume that you have gotten permission, the copyright permission. This is up here not because this is, there was anything wrong with this particular story, but it is emblematic. Suppose that mugshot for Mr. Shore, Christopher Paul Shore, was not the right Mr. Shore. You guys have these mugshots floating around in your archives. And somebody gets popped for some arrest, and you say, oh, I remember. He got popped last year. Let's go get his photo. <clears throat> and you get the wrong photo. That's not a copyright lawsuit. That's a libel lawsuit. Um, and there are lots of them. Um, and they're really expensive. Um, so whenever you are dealing with this scenario of looking for an archive photo, because this is a story about the start of the trial, the mugshot was the mugshot that you got from the law enforcement folks when he got arrested. I think he got arrested last year. But, it was a while ago. 
And there's, whenever there's the passage of time, there's this risk that mistakes can happen. Um, and as a lawyer, I would just, uh, as an ethical issue, I would uh, ask you to think about whether it is fair to Mr. Shore to illustrate a story about the start of his trial where he has been out on recognizance using a mugshot in which, which was taken while he was in the stupor of his drunkenness. Um, there is a sense that this is unfair to Mr. Shore to illustrate him this way. You can, get a, you can do it, uh, but his defense attorney would say this is highly prejudicial. I kind of beg to differ because this is a story about those first seven hours of marriage. And yes. What happened, and there he is. Right, That's but this is the story about the start of his trial. But, but, the, but does he look this way at the trial? No, but that's, but that's the picture that the prosecutor is going to show the jury. Where's Actually, it's not. They can't use this photo. This, this photo will not come into evidence. But you're, I understand your point. Your point is that this is illustrative of the, of the facts of the story. And that's the argument that I will make for you. Um, <laughs> All I'm suggesting is you might also want to think about whether there's a different way to illustrate the story. But usually this is the only thing you've got. But yes. A lot of us have covered cases in which the defendant comes into trial looking not at all like they really look because they're dressing for acquittal. So that's fake. That's more fake than that. Why is it fake that he comes to court in his Sunday best? As opposed to what he wore when he got arrested. This we're we're off on a frolic and a detour. Um, go ahead. What if we were given his engagement photo with him and his fleshy bride, and then googled his name in our archives when we found out he was arrested and said, "Oh, we've got a picture of him." Right. So now, so there, that's an interesting one. So. Um, Let's go back. So this is a story of a guy who got drunk on his wedding night um, and uh, got arrested. Um, suppose you found you were actually going to do more than just go to the trial. You actually did some research and you went to his Facebook page. And on his face, or on his wife's Facebook page, is a picture from the wedding. And it has the bride and groom right there. Can you grab the photo to illustrate the story about what happened after that photo was taken? Fair use. <laughs> right. This is a great segue to fair use. I think Marla's question that was more to like, what if they put an engagement announcement in our paper even, for the photo? Even better. So what you're all resonating to is you got a photo. The photo <laughs> was taken for a different purpose. Can you use that photo without permission to illustrate a story that they would probably rather not have in the newspaper? And the short answer is yes, fair use, First Amendment. You have a right to cover the news, and so long as you are not affecting the market or the value, the co commercial value of the photo, and the wedding announcement photo is unlikely to have a whole lot of commercial value, unless it's a celebrity, um, then you can do it. You can get away with it.